You know when you hear something and it doesn't make any sense right off the bat, but the way someone says it makes it sound so believable? Hi, Iruwa. I'm Elon Musk. Like that's clearly the real Elon Musk and definitely not someone who looks just like him in China. Come on, come on. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. no. Bring, bring. Or maybe it's AI. I love that account, but tap that like button if you agree with me and know that's definitely not Elon Musk. So mathematically, $100,000 is 10% of 1 million. But the claim is that $100,000 invested is actually 33% of the way to a million dollar portfolio. So since this math isn't exactly mathing, let's get to the proof. Why $100,000 is actually one third of a million is due to a concept called compound interest. We've heard of this concept before. So a quick refresher, it just means that money you invest earns you money. And as you contribute more money, that money then earns you more money. And then eventually you get so rich, you run out of real problems and turn into a Batman supervillain. I have to come clean. I did ask ChatGPT to explain compound interest in a way that a five-year-old would understand. I liked my version better. The problem, which you'll see in a moment, is that this can take some time to really get going and see noticeable results. So it seems like that first 100k invested is almost impossible to reach, let alone a million dollars. But it literally is the hardest 100k to accumulate on the path to a million dollar portfolio. And this is for a few reasons, which we'll go over later in the video. And by pointing out how hard it is and the results that you get just by getting through this barrier, you have a better chance of actually making it to your financial goals. So in order to visualize this, we're going to assume an average growth of our investments at 10% annually, minus 2% to adjust for expected inflation, so 8% every year. We'll contribute just $15 a day, which is roughly equal to $5,475 a year or $456.25 a month. Of course, this is just an example. Actual returns will vary based on market performance and how much money is actually invested, in addition, according to the actual rate of inflation. So here's our chart of our hypothetical investment, and we can see two lines. The green line represents our total contributions, or the money we put in ourselves. The red line represents the future value at a hypothetical 8% growth rate a year. If you squint really hard, we can see that we only notice some deviation in the two lines at year 14, and that would be the point where the portfolio would be worth around $132,000, with total contributions being worth around $76,000, which is pretty good given that's $56,000 in investment gains. But just two years before that, in year 12, the portfolio hits just above $100,000. As time goes on, the two lines diverge more and more. At year 24, we're looking at a total value of about $365,000, and we invested around $131,000, so that's a $234,000 profit. At year 36, the portfolio cracks the million dollar mark and total contributions came in just under 200,000, which means about 800,000 was portfolio gains, which is pretty wild when you consider that you don't necessarily work any harder or invest any more dollars than what you were already investing to begin with to make that money. If you extend the timeline just four more years, the overall value is 1.4 million and the total contribution were around 218,000. So at the very end of the chart, an extra four years and $18,000 invested translated to another $400,000 in overall value thanks to compound interest. So for the first 12 years, we are grinding up to 100K. By year 24, the value has grown by a couple hundred thousand dollars more. And just 12 years later from there, it's over a million. So it's true, given the parameters, that the first 100K does put you at one third of the way to a million dollars from a time perspective. So that all sounds great. We're all pumped and ready to invest, but let's be real for a second. This journey can seem like an uphill battle, especially the first 100K. I mean, 12 years is a long time. So why is that first 100K so hard to get? Well, First, we're not investing a huge amount of money initially, so that is a bit of a splash of cold water. And you and I both know how valuable $450 a month actually is with what it can buy. But the reality is, it is still very far away from 100K, even if you invest monthly for years. Second, when you start investing, the first dollars you put in don't have a lot of time in the market to actually start compounding. And initially, most of the money you accumulate will actually be from money you contribute, not actual gains. It's easier to get to your second 100K because 
you already have your first 100k working for you. In our example, it took 12 years to get to 100k, but just six years later, or half the time, the portfolio was worth around $200,000. But in addition, getting to that first 100k is also hard due to the rising cost of living, lower incomes as we start earning compared to later in our careers, and it costs a lot of money to actually get established and stand on your own two feet while you develop skills to pay the bills, invest in your business, build your emergency fund, or just about any other reason under the sun. So there are very valid reasons to delay contributing to our investments. And I totally get that. Sometimes food and gas come first. And I know it can seem hard or even impossible at times to invest our money. We've all been through at least one down bad moment in our life. I remember at one point in time having only $300 in my checking account and having way more than $300 worth of expenses coming up fast. But just to be clear, it's not the end of the world if we didn't all buy real estate in 2008. Some of us were seven. Maybe I'm thinking outside of the box here, but I'm choosing to see opportunity from the full front windshield instead of my tiny little rear view mirror. So given all those perfectly valid reasons not to have invested sooner and missed opportunities, we may or may not have had a chance at, even if we didn't start investing as soon as we possibly could, we can always contribute more when we earn more to help get to our financial goals. Maybe I'm a dreamer, but people like me tend to get to places no one else thinks is possible. And if you're still watching this video, I'm confident you're the type of person that is so far ahead in your financial journey compared to most people, even if your account balances don't show it yet. It's true that compound interest won't have as much of an effect if you start later, but this catch-up contribution or increase in the amount we put in over time whether that's regularly or as a lump sum, does move the needle. So we all have to start somewhere, which I think is the hardest part. And once that happens, the next challenge is to just keep the momentum going. But in reality, once you start seeing your portfolio start growing, even if it's just from contributions alone, it's actually not that difficult to keep the momentum going because it's like playing a game that you always seem to be winning. And I know I can already see it in the comment section, a million dollars today won't be worth as much as a million dollars decades from now. And given inflation, I don't disagree with that statement. But in our example, we didn't increase the amount of dollars we contributed. We kept that at the exact same level since day one, so our dollars we invested would technically be worth less at the end of the timeline than the beginning. But if we adjust our contributions to keep up with inflation, we can offset that. Even if we kept the contributions the same the entire time, we were investing and compounding away, even with inflation, ultimately I would rather have the million dollars down the line than not have it at all. But that's just me personally. Let me know your thoughts on this and your thoughts on the math in this video in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.